if you have any questions throughout this entire time, please chat, please enter them in the questions area. That'll be where some of the colleagues will be answering questions. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask whatever you'd like. Um, during that, I'll be I'll be browsing through that, taking a look while I'm presenting some of this information. So uh, if not, I'll also get to a lot of the questions at the end. And uh, yeah, let's uh, I'll share my screen and we'll get started. All right. So to start off, these are the different topics we're going to go through today. We're going to talk about the 3D Experience platform and SOLIDWORKS and the registration process for first robotics teams. So we'll go through the registration process. We'll go through a little bit about the 3D Experience platform for those of you who haven't seen it before. We're going to talk about the SOLIDWORKS add-in. Then we're going to go into saving to the platform from SOLIDWORKS, managing and sharing those files, and then finally opening in XApps. So the first thing we want to do is we want to focus on going to a website, which some of you might have heard about before, but SOLIDWORKS.com slash first. And just to show you live what that looks like, SOLIDWORKS.com slash first goes directly to this website that we designed specifically for first teams. So this area goes through a variety of topics, explaining the different products we have and introducing some information. Now on the bottom here, you'll see how you can request SOLIDWORKS desktop or the SOLIDWORKS cloud apps. Now, in order to do this, there's a few steps in a process that we'd like you to follow. The first step is to actually create a 3D experience ID. So you do this first before even, even filling out the form for access to it. And that form is pretty simple. It's just email, username, first name, last name, password, and so on. Once you've created that, once you've created that on here and you register, you're then gonna get three emails. First one being an first one is going to be a actual uh, email verification to verify that your email is correct, and then once you've gone through the actual registration process for application for sponsorship, you'll get an invitation, and then you also get a getting started email. So once you've created your 3D Experience ID, you go back here. You'll go to apply to request your license, which will bring you to this next page. And there's actually a video here that goes through all these steps. Now, I'm not going to play the video right now in full, but basically what it goes through is full screen this for you right here. Goes through these steps here, creating an ID, filling, filling out the application. If you're under the age of 18, your mentor will actually have to sign, you'll have to gather and, and have signed parental consent forms. And then you'll get invitation and then you'll be good to go. So those are the steps we'll go through. In this process, you'll then click on you'll then, then click on the actual request form. This goes to the choice of SOLIDWORKS desktop only, cloud apps, or both. And obviously, this is all free to students for all of you. So you can do whichever one you'd like. Um, I suggest, you know, the more things you can get for free, the better. So you might as well do both. Click agree. We go next. We'll put our name in. I'll just put my information in here, Ryan Kohler, email address. Put that in there as well. We go down to, are you 18 years or older? You're gonna select your country. In this case, I'm up in, uh, I'm actually in Maine in the United States. And then the mentor, the mentor is going to select single user or group. So if we do group, choose what competition we're doing. First Lego, first global. And then here you fill out more information. And then you're actually going to upload all the team members' details. And you can actually download an Excel file, or the mentor can, of all the information to fill out for the team members. And then once that's done, the mentor will then also have to uh, submit parental uh, signatures uh, for all, all those under the age of 18. That's when you finally get your invitation. Now, the invitation is going to go to your email and you'll get this launch your 3D experience platform. Now, when you launch this, there's two, two websites you want to write down. One, obviously, solidworks.com slash first in order to register. The second one is go.3ds.com slash edu cloud. Now, this is the link that goes directly to the academic servers that we use 
for sponsoring and for schools. And that's a, that's the one you want to remember. So if we were to type that in up top here, go.3ds.com slash cloud. It'll log into the platform. Obviously you put your information in, you log in, and here you are in the platform for the first time. Now the platform is a combination of tons of different apps and tools that are used in industry and commercial and all over the place. Uh, many of the apps you might not use, but they're there because we want to make sure make sure everybody gets the experience of what you potentially could be using in the future. So uh, I'm only going to focus on a few apps right now off the beginning just to get you started. Uh, but there's tons of other things in here that could be really helpful if you want to build your resume and learn more things for the future. When we get in here for the first time, there's one app we immediately want to use called 3D Space. Now, 3D Space is basically the background of where the files are being stored. So once you open 3D Space, in the middle here, you see My Collaborative Spaces, and you click New Collaborative Space. Now, once you do this, you're going to basically type in the new Collaborative Space name, or whatever you want to name it. Maybe it's called uh, uh, First Robotics. Maybe it's called your team name, whatever you want. You create that. And then it'll put it in here. And then you're basically never going to, you're never going to touch that again. That is just where the files are going to be stored and you're good to go. Now, the second thing is, the second thing is that you're then going to basically download the SOLIDWORKS add in. So we want to connect this to SOLIDWORKS. Many of you might already be using SOLIDWORKS. Um, and it's a perfect way to basically have that cloud storage while you're using SOLIDWORKS, as well as revision control, locking and unlocking files, and so on. So we're going to scroll down. And once again, this is that compass button, that circle button in the top left. We're going to scroll down to the one called SOLIDWORKS add-in. You're going to click the drop down, and you'll be able, you'll see a pop-up with 3D Experience R 2022 hotfix. Now, this is the download to connect your SOLIDWORKS with the platform. So once you've downloaded and installed this, and it's ready to go, you just have to click on this SOLIDWORKS add-in and it'll actually automatically launch SOLIDWORKS. So to go over that one more time, you install SOLIDWORKS, you log into the platform, you download this hotfix or this connection to SOLIDWORKS, and then you launch SOLIDWORKS from the platform. Once it launches, SOLIDWORKS will open. You can load a part. It'll ask you to what, what collaborative space you want to save it under, and you'll save it under the one that you created. And then you'll notice that there's this circle symbol down here, the compass symbol, and you'll see, I'll hit accept all, you'll see all the parts of the assembly that you opened are right here. Now, there's these little save icons to the right of it. And basically what we're gonna do is click save active window. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna save all of this content to the platform. Now, the second app on the platform, which is extremely helpful, is one called Bookmark Editor. Now, Bookmark Editor is like a folder file system, allows us to save the files in a folder layout. I have bookmarks. I got bookmarks one. I'm just going to create another one, and I'm just going to call it Assembly. Save that. There we go. Click Apply to All. And now you'll see that we now are going to have Assembly is, the, is where all the bookmarks are going to be saved to. Make sure bookmark project one assembly. Actually, oops, actually it went to the other one. Let's check one more time. Had the other one selected before I before I clicked it. We'll save it. Actually, we'll save it here for now. Apply to all. Hit save. Now this is going to basically take all these files and upload them to the platform in that collaborative space. And then we're going to be able to view them inside of the platform when we hop in. You know, that basically was asking me to log in to basically make sure the connection's right. This is, as I mentioned, this is where the it's asking you where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in one called Test Space. And then it's going to go through the process of loading these to the platform. Now, this might take a minute, so I'll take a look at the questions. Let's answer some of those now. Um, is a school required? Brian, you answered that one already. Perfect. And this presentation, this actually will be saved on a Zoom. Uh, we are recording this Zoom call, so we'll be able to actually send it afterwards. 
So this can take a few minutes depending on the size of the actual assembly. Um, I'm running on pretty fast internet here at my uh, at my location, so hopefully it won't take too long. But once all these files are, uplo are uploaded to the platform, we'll then be able to work on a few of the other things inside this SolidWorks add-in. Now, if you are a SolidWorks user and you enjoy using SolidWorks and you don't think you need the platform, you got a you got a strong PC that you're using, let's say for gaming, and you're using it for doing simulation studies and everything else, then this is a great way for you to keep using that and connect all these to your colleagues. And you also will have the ability to create revisions. You'll have the ability to lock parts. So if you want to work on a part, you don't want someone else to touch it, you can lock it. And then you can also do uh, add, change things called like maturity. Maturity is an example of something where let's say you want to 3D print a part and you really don't want anybody to edit the part. So you can lock it or you can change its maturity, which is basically the process of the part. So let's say we want to freeze that part. We're just basically telling everybody, hey, this part's frozen. No one touch it. We just need, we need to 3D print it first and test it. And then once you've done that, test it, you can then unfreeze it and then you can work on it normally as you did before. So the platform allows you the ability to do other things with file management that you couldn't do with basic SOLIDWORKS. Let's give this guy a little bit, a little bit a second longer to run. Uh, so while we're while we're doing this, is there any questions from anybody here so far? Any other questions? Have many of uh, actually? Let's run this real quick. While we're here, we're going to run a quick poll. I'd like to know what is the main operating system that everybody uses when they're using CAD. Now. Do it as put submit the primary one. Um, I'm sure, like I have an Apple device, I have a iPad, an iPhone, a, a gaming computer, a variety of things. I want to know when you're on, when you are using CAD, what is the primary one that you use? All right, we have a few more minutes for people to answer that. Okay. All right, I think we got most of them. All right, so looks like majority of people are Windows users. Hey, that's great. It's definitely uh, definitely the one to use when you're trying to do high-end simulation analysis as well as very complex assemblies. So I, I, I can definitely agree with that. And that poll... So what I want to do right now while this is still loading, I want to jump back to the platform and I want to show you a little bit about the basics of how to use it and use our uh, design software that's built in. So the platform has two key, two key areas. One is the compass with all the apps. But once you set up a dashboard, which I'm going to show how to do, you're probably never going to touch this area again. The next thing is dashboards, which is that we call this the burger symbol. It's the three, the three uh, horizontal lines, kind of looks like a burger. And this is your dashboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a test dashboard. So I click the plus symbol, I type in a name called test, I create it. It's gonna then jump to that dashboard. And I'm just gonna rename this first one called, first tab called CAD. Now, once I have that in there, I can then mess around and play with the different play with the different uh, apps and bring them in and design the design the dashboard exactly how I want. But in reality, all you're actually going to need is two. First thing is going to be called bookmark editor, which I mentioned before. And the second one is just going to be one of the X apps. And the reason why I say one of the X apps is because once you have one of them in here, it's very easy to switch between all of them. So if I click this drop down and I go to fit, it's actually going to perfectly fit that to my screen and I can still move around, I can still full, full screen stuff and minimize it, and I can still customize it, but you have your two main things. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about our X apps, they are designed by SOLIDWORKS R&D, and they're created to have a very similar feel as SOLIDWORKS, and actually some features from Katia, for those of you who have ever used Katia. Now, 
you'll see a variety of different X apps, X drawing, X frame, X mold, X shape, and X sheet metal. And that's just like inside SolidWorks, we have the different add-ins for the different things. Um, X design is your primary one. And that's the one we're using mainly. You can see here, I'm just gonna show you the bookmark editor. Bookmark editor left, you can see we can do our folder system. We can add our parts in here. But let me show you what it looks like when I add a new component inside X design. So I'm gonna create a new component called test. I'm gonna choose the same collaborative space I choose before called test space. I'm then gonna full screen this. So we focus just on using CAD. And once again, I'm just in a regular browser, just like all of you. So I'm gonna click on this top plane. I'm just gonna throw a sketch in just to show you how quick and easy it is to create stuff. I'm gonna use the shortcut key, the S key, just like you would inside SOLIDWORKS. Add a rectangle in, press escape like you would in SOLIDWORKS. Click on a line and I'm just gonna type 140 and you'll see I can actually automatically add a smart dimension. So I've done a few small things that really make it nice to jump around and do SOLIDWORKS like skills, but at the same time, we've adapted them and made them a little easier to use. I'll exit the sketch in the top right. I'll go to features. I can click on extrude. It's gonna ask what I want to extrude. I'm gonna click sketch one. Click on this. Oop, X that out real quick. Click sketch one. Let's extrude this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just clicking the wrong button. I'm clicking adding a block, my fault. Now in this menu right here, you'll see it's a little different than SOLIDWORKS, but one of the cool things is, let's say I didn't want to do an extrude, but I want to do something else. I can actually swap between them all inside the same menu. So if you accidentally wanted to do a hole, but you actually didn't extrude, it's all right here. You can also do a thin feature. You can do different directions, advanced, all those different things you do inside SOLIDWORKS, you can still do here. So I'm gonna keep that as 35 millimeters, you have a basic box. I'm gonna click save. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click this drop down arrow on the right hand corner and I'm gonna click add to bookmark. Now, if you remember before, I had those bookmark folders created. I'll do project, I got assembly. I'll just click on assembly and do set. That is now gonna save this part to that folder. So if I were to minimize this, I can also refresh individual apps. So if I wanna refresh this one, It'll take a moment to basically connect the two. Um, but yeah, we can refresh this and then, actually I'm gonna close this just to show you. Close that file, refresh this. It may take a little bit longer just for it to connect. And once that file is then put in there, we'll be able to, I'll show you what we can do with it afterwards. Let me take a browse through the questions real quick. All right, let's see. We'll be able to get the recording after after out afterwards via a link. Uh, we know everybody that re has registered so far in that's currently viewing this, so we'll make sure that you get a you'll get a information afterwards. So one of the questions I see is, you know, every time you try to use a SolidWorks add-in and ask you to log in, um, that is the case with the, when you select Remember Me, it still does ask to log in. Um, that's currently just the way uh, uh, the way it's been working, but we will bring that up. Uh, good question. So let me show you something else in here. So once once it's indexed and it's combined the two together, you'll see I now have that test part inside of bookmark editor. I can then do a few different things. First thing I can do is I can lock it. So I can lock this so that no one else can use it. Uh, it's just me as a user that can access it. So if someone else tried to access it, they would see that it's locked by Ryan. Second thing we can do is you can right click on it and you have a bunch of different features to open with X design, 
copy it, copy link or share. If you want to share with a with someone directly in the platform, you can do can read or can edit. But you can also share the entire folder. So if you create an entire project folder with all the parts, all the assemblies, categorized and put in folders how you want, you can then right click on that and share that with your entire group or have a link that you can send so that they have access. Let me go back here. So when it comes to branching, there actually is new revisions, new branches and revision from. So you're actually able to do full revisions in here uh, as well as in the SOLIDWORKS add-in and you'll be able to actually add those in there. So if I were to branch this, we're gonna create a new branch here. Uh, we'll do it. We'll just call it test uh, version comment, test branch. Good to go. There's advanced branching with more information you can add into it. I'm just gonna leave it generic. I'm gonna branch that out and we'll have a second revision in there in a moment as well. So you'll see this revision A and we'll be able to have multiple in there that we can work on simultaneously. See a few questions there. So how do students add to a shared space? So it depends on where you're adding them from. If you're using Xdesign, then you can share those. You would just use, you add all of the all of your team members to the same collaborative space that I created in the beginning. And then you don't have to worry about that. And then you can then use Bookmark Editor to basically share all those files and connect those files and you, and you can work all in the same area. Now you can't have CAD open at the same time and you can't be working on the CAD file at the same time. Uh, and see them happening live with the different with the different changes but you can lock the part work on it and then have the other student work on it and all your files will be in the same main area and then you can then organize your bookmarks however you'd like i'll, I'll show you real quickly how to add students to that or how to add members to a shared space so if i'm in the compass here and I go down to 3D space. I can then go into the space that I want. This one's called test space. I can then click the drop down and I can do add members. I can then add them as authors. So if I type my name, my own name in here, I'll be in here as well. I can add myself as an author. Uh, or I think it's in here. I can also do user groups. And I can have all the members in one user group. Now I'll show you what a user group looks like. If I scroll down to the bottom here and go to user group, where are you? There we go. If I create a user group with all my members on the team, then whenever I want to add people to and all the all the members at once, all I have to do is type that user group. So we'll go my groups. We're going to create a new one. Oh, my jump again on loading. Going to create a new group. We're going to title it. We'll just say, we'll just title it first. And we'll do create. And once you've created this, you can then go into it. And then you can also add members. So if I add myself to this one, Ryan Kohler. And I can also add the count I'm on right now, which is called test, add those. So now that one's called first, you see there's two members in here. So if I'm in 3D space and I've actually added those members to this, I can click the drop down. I can go to add members and I can go to author and I can actually just type in first and you'll see first two members. So whatever I add first to automatically adds those people to all, all those members in, the, in that user group automatically get added to this. You'll see test user has been invited to collaboration space. So it's very easy to add people and very easy to share stuff. Uh, it's just basically giving people access to those areas. Let's take a look at questions again while we're here.
Let's see, Brian's answered one of those. So author, contributor, owner. Owner, author is just someone that can basically create files in the collaborative space. So basically create CAD files and save them there. Uh, contributor can view it. Uh, remember, this is designed for industry. So if you have a prod, if you have a team project, not everybody's going to be a CAD designer. Not everybody's going to be uh, like the the leader of the group. Some people are going to be project managers. Some people are going to be marketing. Some people are going to be QA. So you can add those as contributors. And then the owner is the, basically the first person to create it, and they have full control over it, removing people, deleting people, and all of that. Um, and we have some documents uh, online that actually go through the detail of each one. But pretty much all you really need to focus on is if you want people designing stuff and adding it to it, you want to add them in there as an author. Um, contributor doesn't give you access to basically save to that for CAD files. All right. checking on one thing and feel free to keep asking questions. Just reloading one thing in the background. Okay. So as I mentioned, back to this, uh, some of the apps in here, which many of you might not have used before, but now that we have things like 3D printers, they can be extremely helpful. X shape. I want to open this real quick. Some people, I myself as a, I'm a, a mechanical engineer, but many, many people go into things like industrial engineering or uh, or into more free form design that isn't more it isn't as structured as you would use with a SolidWorks or another mechanical design software. So X shape is a free form body. So in here, you'll see it looks extremely similar to X design. Um, and actually cool trick, if you have the X key, you can actually swap between anything while you have the part open. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little blob down here and I can enter this blob and I can scale it however I'd like, just generic sizing. I can scale it from mid plane and so on. But once this blob is in here, I can start doing things like pushing and pulling sections. So if I hold down control and select these three, I can actually drag those. I can also you know, pull things different way. I can actually click on opposite edges or quadrants. And I can do this function called extrude here. And it'll actually, because they're opposite, it actually understands to cut those out. So now you, know, you have that cut straight out. So it's a cool way to basically create freeform shapes and maybe a mold or an outside or the outside body of the of the actual uh, first robot. Things that aren't going to be very rigid and mechanical design shape. Uh, this is a great way to do freeform and actually play around and kind of mess around and make something look really cool and neat. And with the 3D printers that many of us have now, uh, this makes it really easy to actually print these and create some cool stuff. Okay, I wanna jump back to SOLIDWORKS real quick. So as we said, we have disassembly in SOLIDWORKS. We have all these parts, you'll see these little check marks next to everything showing the status saying it's been, this file has been saved to the platform. We have our lock symbols. Actually, let me drag this out a little further. We have our little lock symbol if we wanna lock the entire assembly or individual parts, status. As I said, maturity. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I go to maturity, this allows us to freeze, release, obsolete. So if you're working on a part, maybe it's previous year and it just doesn't make sense for this year anymore, you can put market as obsolete. If it's something that's been worked on many years in a row and it's perfect, it's exactly how you want it, you can freeze it. Uh, so that way no one's messing with it and it's, and it's how you want it um, and a variety of other things. So we also have, you know, it shows you information, where is it saved, what collaborative space, the name, physical part, and all of those. 
as we mentioned before, there's also your full revision control down here with creating revisions or branches and so on, all right here inside SolidWorks, um, as well as collaboration, sharing with others and who the owner of the different part is. And all that is just built in on the side here while you're doing your SolidWorks. So it's actually a great way to view everything, see it and manage the files as well. Um, if you're if someone's working on something inside X Design and they made a change or an update uh, and you're working on assembly, you can always, uh, where is it? I think it's right here. Yep, you can click this drop down up top on my session and you can actually refresh it. So by refreshing it, you're actually refreshing all these files, connecting with the server and making sure you have the latest thing. So you can see if one of your teammates locked something or something became unlocked, so you can actually start working on it. And all of that is all built in here. So a very good question that popped up. Uh, sometimes when I open SolidWorks files in 3D Experience, I can't see the same features that I can in SolidWorks. Uh, so one of the things I mentioned in the beginning is all the X apps are designed by SolidWorks R&D, but they're not perfectly, they're actually designed on different kernels. So the feature history and different things uh, you will not be able to see if you bring a SOLIDWORKS part into the platform in XDesign, but you'll be able to use them in assemblies. You'll be able to still edit them in SOLIDWORKS. So if someone's creating the entire assembly in XDesign and you're you're giving parts from SOLIDWORKS, they'll be able to use them in assembly. They'll be able to basically work on them, uh, but they're not going to be able to edit the features and the details of the sketches and everything like you would in SOLIDWORKS on the platform. And it works the same way with an XDesign part. You can bring an X design part into SOLIDWORKS as a 3D XML file, and it won't have all the features, but you'll be able to use it in assemblies and everything else. So this is what I wanted to go through today. Basically show you the registration process, show that you can use the platform pretty easily, kind of jump in, create some parts. The only two apps you really need to use are Bookmark Editor, and the X apps. And as I mentioned, you know, if you save this and close it, you don't actually have to jump between and have a, an app for X shape, X design, and so on. You can actually just switch it right here inside this window. And you'll be able to actually work on all these um, and jump between stuff pretty easily. I honestly am a big fan. Uh, once you've downloaded the hot fixes and you're and you make sure that your SOLIDWORKS add-in is up to date. And just to verify with everybody, if you're using the SOLIDWORKS add-in, hit the compass, scroll down to SOLIDWORKS add-in, click the drop down. And if you ever see a yellow or yellowish orange down arrow right here, it means that there's a new update and you want to download it. Once you download that, it'll automatically update the SOLIDWORKS add-in. And then you'll when you click on this to open SOLIDWORKS, it'll be connected perfectly to the platform and it'll be good to go. All right. So Let's open up for more questions right now. Uh, that is what I want to go over today. Uh, so let's open up for any type of questions you might have. So there's a question in there. Uh, can you show how to get these apps? So once you've signed up, once you've registered for the platform, I'll go through this one more time. Once you've filled out this registration, and once again, this is the for sponsorship, and you choose SOLIDWORKS Desktop and SOLIDWORKS Cloud Apps, you will get access to SOLIDWORKS Desktop to install. And then you're going to get an invitation in your email to launch and log in to the platform once we've given you access. Once you have access to the platform, you will then have the compass and you're going to have all those apps in there. So you need to sign up for sponsorship. You need to register. You'll get both of them. And then you'll have both to use. Now there is a variety of other apps in here uh, with lots of different lots of different applications, many of which are used for commercial, and that's why I'm focusing just on these two, Bookmark Editor and and the actual and the X Design or the X apps. Uh, they do a great job of managing files and do a good job of uh, keeping the platform nice and simple. Because as any software, even Excel, even Word, or you name it, there's always that basic level, and then there's a whole other level of macros and then different stuff inside Excel and all these other features that you need that you would learn later. 
So to start off simple, bookmark editor and X apps. And then as time goes on, if you want to start using other, other features in here, there is a lot of other good stuff. One good one to highlight is actually called project planning. I'll show this real quick while we still have time. Project planning is basically your way to manage your entire project. I'm going to create a project called first, put a picture in, you know, where it is, all that information. Now in here, you're going to have a few different things. Our first tab is our summary. It basically shows what the churn rate and information is of everything we've been working on, every task you create, how many have been finished, how many are overdue, and so on. In the task area, this is where you create those. So if I were to create a, a task called, uh, let's say, create arm and add an open, I can then create a task. I can choose a description. I can choose what its priority is, like if it's urgent and so on. I can choose percent done. So let's say I forgot to add the task initially and I actually already started on it and it's at 25%. I can choose a due date when I want it to be done. I want this fixed due date of Monday next week. And I can also add attachments. This is where you can actually connect and connect stuff like bookmarks to it, uh, deliverables. And then finally, you can actually go into the people area and you can actually add other users. So let's say I wanted myself or my other account to be one of the people working on this. I can add them to it. And I can also comment in here to say like, you know, someone's yelling, yelling at me. I can say working on it and I can add comments in here. And if you add comments, you can actually, for example, I can do an at and I can type in Ryan and I can actually make a comment directly to me. And on my other account, I would then have a notification up top here that said, Hey, test user made a comment to you or test, you know, and so on. So project planning is really good. It is a great way to manage everything. And you can even go into the schedule area and you have a full Gantt chart view of all your tasks, everything that you have, as well as how long each thing is to be worked on and the dates. You can also change things, give people a little more time, and you can even make things dependent on each other. So project planning is another level up, another way to increase and be able to manage your project in a more advanced way than just using the files inside Bookmark Editor. All right. So, any other questions? Feel free to ask anything you like. We're here to we're here to help. Uh, so, one thing too, if you if you requested access to the platform and you log in and you see a blank screen. There is something that can happen sometimes where you actually need to clear your internet cache um, and cache as in C-A-C-H-E. You want to clear the internet cache. You want to close the browser, reopen it. And then you want to make sure that you're using this. You want to make sure you're using this URL, go.3ds.com slash edu cloud. Make sure you save this right here. And this is what you want to use to log into the platform every time. The reason why is there's two different servers. We have a commercial server and an academic server, and this one goes to the academic server. And a way to check that very easily, you'll see in my URL up top here, it says academia in the URL. If you do not see academia in the URL, you are not at the right place. Academia should be right in the front here. It should say E1 or whatever it says, academia dash if we. If it doesn't have that, then you're probably trying, you're probably logging into the wrong area. So there is some basic training that can be done for the platform uh, for using XApps. Uh, we can send out some information afterwards, and we're actually creating we're actually creating more learning paths specifically for first robotics. Uh, there's some content being created right now by the commercial team on XApps that's going to be very helpful for everybody. So once we have that, and once we combine those together, we'll be able to send a link out. Uh, but in the meantime, there is link if you're inside XApps. There is a quick tour. There's also a thing down here for training. You can click and log into that. Um, this brings you to uh, our EDU space our EDU uh, space area where there's lots of different training. But uh, one of the best ways to get training is actually from mysolidworks.com. 
if you get you get a serial number for SolidWorks, you can actually use that serial number for SolidWorks to register at mysolidworks.com, which gives you access to uh, standard my SolidWorks or my or my SolidWorks student. And once you have that, there is learning paths directly for X Design that you can walk through and go through. And just to show you what how to register for that, it's actually on the homepage. Uh, oh, forgot S. So mysolworks.com, and you'll see here on the right hand side. My SolidWorks for students, learn more. In this process, you're going to create an account. You're going to register your 9020 SolidWorks serial number. Once that serial number is registered, you'll then have access to student. As you can see here, it's a lot higher level than guest. You even have access to our SolidWorks CSWA, CSWP, and CSWE uh, learning paths uh, that will, can help you get certified in, in SolidWorks and a ton of other learning. So once you have this registered and you're logged in, you can then actually search for something, you can search for X Design, And you'll see in here, there's lots of different learnings and different stuff. You can select training and you can do explore the 3D creator role and you can go in there and you can log in and then you'll be able to learn that as well. And this goes to almost the same area as before. So register with your 9020 serial number in there. And then once that's registered and you're logged in, you'll, you can then search for explore the 3D creator role and you'll be able to use that to learn, learn X design in a, in a deeper level. All right. Just reading through the questions, see what else we have here. Yeah, and, and the resource I would suggest would be mysolworks.com for uh, for the X Design stuff, and then that will give you access to some content in the what's called edu space. Um, right now, the edu space you need a higher level access uh, to get access to some of the other content. And we're working on creating a, a new version that will have access for you as well. But currently, my SolidWorks is the best place. All right, we'll leave a few more minutes for more questions. Once again, please feel free to ask anything you like. I'm just giving some thumbs up to some of the questions, the ones I like. Hey, Ryan, this is Brian. Thanks hey, for Brian. doing a great job. Uh, I did put in the chat for everybody to see uh, a link to uh, our website where you can learn about, uh, just watch a couple quick videos of each of the cloud apps that are included with the SolidWorks Cloud Apps sponsorship uh, for FIRST. Um, that's a different website, so don't try to register on that site. Um, register on the site that Ryan showed at the beginning of this uh, of this webinar, which is solidworks.com slash first. But that site in the chat right now uh, does show you a few videos of what's included in the, the Cloud App sponsorship, X Design, X Shape, um, drawings on the cloud, project planner, uh, all that as well. So those are some cool videos to check out after the webinar. Thank you, Brian. And I have that open right now so everybody can see. As he said, X design, X shape, sheet metal, mold, frame, drawings, and even project planning. Actually, most of the things we went over. That's a perfect website. Thank you, Brian. Well, thank you everybody for coming. We really appreciate you. We really appreciate you joining this webinar. Hopefully, it shed some light on the SolidWorks add-in as well as some of the X apps we have at, you have access to. Uh, they definitely are a great way, especially for those who don't have powerful PCs that want to still use CAD. And uh, I even have an iPad and my iPhone that I can use all those X apps on perfectly. Um, so feel free to, to sign up and register, get access to all of these. And thank you for coming. Hope everybody has a great day. And uh, we'll be uh, sharing this 
we'll be sharing a link to this recorded webinar after this after this. So thank you so much and have a great day.